We now move to the open debate, and I call Jim Fairley to be followed by Pam Gossel. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I'd just like to express my disappointment that there's not more men sitting here today. <laughs> President Officer, it gives me no pleasure to be speaking in today's debate because, in this day and age, we shouldn't need to have the debate at all. Women have been given lots of advice over the years. They've been told not to walk home alone or dress too provocatively or show too much skin. They've been told to mind their drinks while out socialising or not to get too drunk. They've even been given secret codes to tell the bar staff what to do when they feel in danger. They've been given all this advice in order to protect them from the threat of male violence. And now it appears the new threat is a syringe. But this isn't a young man's generational thing. It's a multi-generational, classless, continuous thing that needs to be faced up to. Recognising International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women and Girls also tells us that this is a global issue. But the danger is, by focusing on that global perspective, we risk failing to ask the most fundamental question of all. And that is, what do we do right here and right now? And when I say we, I mean men and boys. What it is, why is it that we think the solution to the issue of male violence is to tell women and girls how to protect themselves from us. Surely the most obvious answer is to stop the behaviour that hurts them in the first place. If we manage to get any message out of today's debate, we need to get the message across to men that we are responsible for our actions. During the marches after the rape and murder of Sarah Everard, I read the banner which said, why don't you just stop killing us? Think about that for a second. Why don't you just stop killing us? Well, the message is clearly not being heard. Because since that crime, there have been another 80, over 80 women killed by men since March alone. And I'm not asking how many more there has to be before we start to do something about it. I say we start to do something about it right now and we start to do it for real. This isn't an issue for somewhere else. It's an issue in every town and every city right here in Scotland. And we must look at ourselves at how we behave and how we teach the next generation. As a boy, I was taught to treat girls in the same way as I'd want my sisters to be treated. However, that life lesson didn't fully arm me with the knowledge and understanding that I think we should teach all our young men and boys about what it is to be a female in our society. And it doesn't matter if she's someone's mother, daughter or sister, that she is someone at all is what matters. My daughter's and wife explained to me the turmoil and fear a girl feels when walking home and some random guy calls out her wolf whistles. Even worse when there's more than one male and safety in numbers they egg each other on to check her out. But they never seem to understand why the compliment isn't welcomed. Why fear kicks in for a lone female as she walks home at night and there's a man walking behind her, or worse, crosses a street and starts walking towards her. This is, of course, when people start to chip in with the argument, not all men. But how does someone who has grown up learning to fear males know that you are safe? They don't. She doesn't. And it's us, it's our men's responsibility to make sure that we create the space to allow that fear to be dispelled. That means being fully mindful of how our actions, however innocent, could be interpreted. We teach our children from a very early age that unwanted male attention is acceptable. If a wee boy pulls a pigtail or hits a girl or tries to steal a kiss, we tell the wee girl that he's showing that he likes her, rather than telling the wee boy that his behaviour is wrong and explain it to him that if he likes the girl, he doesn't get her attention by hitting her. Even at that early age, we are setting out the societal norms that are entirely skewed towards females accepting male dominance and violence as a form of affection or endearment, and that the refusal of females to accept those advances are somehow a breach of the male entitlement. And as we grow, the lads' mentality and male entitlement grows with us, because society accepts it as the norm. The distance between laddish banter to sexual violence is far shorter than we are prepared to believe. And we need to challenge and change that culture. The Police Scotland video born out of the, the murder of Sarah Everard, don't be that guy. It's a good start to the conversation. It's an easy phrase to adopt in, the, in male company. And it can quickly change the direction of a conversation that is heading in the wrong way. And I recently read a book by Brene Brown. And she talked about challenging someone who has gone over the line. Her argument was that challenging it lasts about eight seconds. The discomfort of challenging it lasts about eight seconds. That feeling of allowing behaviour which flies in the face of our own values to go unchallenged, however, never goes away. And I have to say, I can tell you from experience, she's right on both counts. However, a man calling out the behaviour of other men will lead to that few seconds of discomfort for us. For a woman, that discomfort comes with fear 
that she may have just entered an unsafe situation that can lead to aggression and violence extremely quickly. And that is a real life experience of many women in these situations, and it shouldn't be. In every facet of society, from schools, colleges, university, sports clubs, sports stadia, the workplace, this parliament, and as importantly, home, it's up to us to change that culture. We can legislate, we can set punitive sentencing for domestic, sexual, physical, physical or psychological abuse, but all this is doing is treating a symptom and not a cause. We need to stop the abuses before they start. We must recognise that what we males see as harmless fun can be frightening to a woman. We must teach our boys and girls that those cute wee behaviours aren't cute. They are the future of a continuing patriarchy and that the lads lad mentality is dangerous because it leads to a tacit approval of escalation into sexism, misogyny or worse, domestic abuse, assault, rape and even murder. And that means that we males have to look in the mirror and ask ourselves some serious questions. And as my daughter rightly pointed out, feel that personal discomfort of recognising something in ourselves that we have said, we have done a joke about a banter, whatever it was, and accept that it is no longer, and in fact, that it never was acceptable. It's up to every one of us right across the country to recognise, and we do, the behaviours and comments that cross that line. And for the sake of the safety of women and girls, when we see it or hear it, we call it out and we take that eight seconds of discomfort and just say, don't be that guy. Thank you. I call 